Imagine overhearing a doctor say to your mother, you better hope he di dies, because if he lives, he will be a worthless vegetable. This is 14-year-old Ed Roberts. He would never forget the comment made in 1953, just after his parents were told that he would be mostly paralyzed from the neck down due to severe poliomyelitis. In 1956, Roberts returned to high school via phone. Although he had been a good student before becoming a quadriplegic, now he would earn grades that put him near the top of his senior class. This was because he realized the key to his American dream was now what he could accomplish with his mind. After he graduated from high school in 1959, Roberts, with the help of his attendants, funded by California's Office of Rehabilitation, attended San Mateo Community College. Here, Roberts developed a keen interest in government and wanted to continue his studies in political science further at a four-year live-in institution, such as the University of California at Los Angeles. This school had pioneered moderate accessibility to provide educational opportunities and the American dream to the state's disabled war veterans. However, California's Office of Rehabilitation refused to help Roberts gain a further education because he had not served in the war and required a high degree of help with all daily living tasks, such as bathing, dressing, and feeding. Roberts and his social worker, Jean Worth, fought to convince the state that the worth of a disabled person is not determined by the physical tasks they can perform, but their capacity to make decisions for themselves and learn. Jean Worth also convinced Ed to attend the University of California, Berkeley because it had the best political science program in the state. Roberts felt that his physical shortcomings should not keep him from achieving anything less than a doctorate in political science from Berkeley. By this point, he knew that he had a talent for public advocacy because he battled to take this dream to the doorstep of one of the country's premier universities. There was one problem with Roberts' goal of attending Berkeley. Few of the buildings on campus could support his 600-pound iron lung. An iron lung is a primitive respiratory device many quadriplegic polio patients had to lie in for extended periods to keep themselves breathing overnight. The only building that could support Ed's medical needs was the University Medical Center, Coel Hospital. There, the hospital hired a staff of extra attendants to care for Ed and the 12 other quadriplegic students that would join Ed after he began at Berkeley in 1962. Despite Berkeley's revolutionary new live-in program for severely disabled students, many campus buildings were not accessible to these students without the help of attendance in the 1960s. Aware of his chronic lack of access to facilities, both on and off campus, the residents of the Coel program began to have late night intellectual conversations about how they could use their intelligence and access to Berkeley's resources to enhance the opportunities and attitude toward physically disabled people all across the country. Roberts was inspired to lead this group by the radical protests over civil rights that took place in Berkeley's campus in the mid-1960s. In his mind, all minorities deserved access to the education and facilities that could make the American dream possible. One example of the Coel residents, or the Rolling Quads as they came to be known, fighting for their rights is when the group went to Berkeley City Council and insisted curb cuts, or the openings that make it possible for wheelchair users to access sidewalks, be installed downtown. The council argued, such measures are not needed because we never see persons in wheelchairs out to use them. Roberts pointed out that the reason people never saw wheelchair users out was because they could not access the sidewalks without these adaptations. By 1966, Roberts was done with his master's and working on his PhD, but he wished his community at Coel could be integrated into the greater Berkeley community more. Some residents had begun to move out of the hospital building, but had trouble finding accessible housing, workplaces, and upkeep for their accessible technology. Roberts found a solution in Gene Worth's new program for minority students at his old community college. 
The program paired struggling minority students with a successful mentor that helped them figure out their problems. Roberts knew that this peer mentorship technique could help his friends who struggled with the bureaucracy and hypocrisy of able-bodied nurses and rehabilitation counselors who, in some instances, thought they knew how to run the lives of disabled people so they would be as little work for the state as possible, instead of helping them achieve their fullest potential and thus the American dream. In 1966, Gene Worth invited Roberts to come to Washington in order to help draft legislation that took her mentorship program to a more national level. The pair wanted to ensure disabled people were considered a minority under this new legislative program. Ed Roberts' work in Washington spawned the first Center for Independent Living on Berkeley's campus in 1970. It was first called the Center for Physically Disabled Students. However, as the program spread off the Berkeley campus, the name was changed to reflect the new movement's broader reach. The centers were staffed with disabled counselors who focused on the users at the center, who were called clients, and helped the clients develop the decision-making skills and logistics needed to live on your own, such as hiring and firing attendants, looking for accessible houses, and acquiring assistive technology. In 1975, Roberts was appointed the head of California's Office of Rehabilitation, where he put his client-centered model into practice statewide. Now, the funding available for disabled people to achieve their dreams of independence was not determined by the physical tasks they could or could not perform, but rather their decision-making skills and the resources available to help them in centers for independent living. Roberts would hold the position as director of the Office of Rehabilitation until 1983. During this time, along with a group of colleagues, Roberts expanded the idea of centers for independent living and an individual-centered idea of what achievement means beyond California state borders. Today, according to the Council for Independent Living.org, there are over 400 centers for independent living throughout all of the states and territories held by the United States. Independent living centers today not only provide peer counselors and access to needed resources for wheelchair users, but also blind, deaf, and cognitively disabled clients. Centers offer classes in basic life skills, everything from cooking to recreational sports teams. These centers also provide employment to thousands of disabled people with college degrees all across America allowing them to empower others with their knowledge and experience. After and during his time as the director of the Office of Rehabilitation, Ed Roberts became heavily involved in protests to increase access to public facilities, such as government buildings, shops, and all other public resources for Americans with physical disabilities. In 1977, Roberts and other activists occupied the United States Department of Health, Education, and Welfare in San Francisco for the longest time in a 